Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tara East, writer, scholar, teacher and author of the mystery novel Every Time He Dies. As I mentioned in last week's video, I was recently checking the analytics on my YouTube channel and noticed that a video I posted over a year ago called Heinlein's Five Rules of Writing has by far been my most popular video. So I've decided to take the obvious hint and put together a series that documents the writing rules of four famous authors. Last week I explored Octavia Butler's nine rules of writing and in this week's video I'm going to be talking about Natalie Goldberg's seven rules of writing which appeared in her craft-based book Wild Mind, Living the Writer's Life. Now before we dive into this week's video, I want to quickly acknowledge that for many of us right now, writing may not actually be the top priority. Life is still a little bit unstable. Many of us are still working from home. We're still dealing with sticky financial situations and concerns. And even though some of these restrictions are lifting, there are still restrictions in place. And so life still hasn't quite returned to normal. Now I decided to put this series together as a way to inspire and support you during this time so that if you do want to write, you have the tools at hand to help you do so. Now onto this week's video. Natalie Goldberg is an American author of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry, but she is most well known for her books that explore writing as Zen practice. While many craft-based books focus on the nuts and bolts of writing, things like character, dialogue, plot, theme, Goldberg's books actually focus on the emotional rewards of writing, as well as how to develop a writing practice. Goldberg's methodology is skewed towards journal writing, but the advice presented in all of her books can easily be applied to all other forms of writing, whether it be fiction, poetry, or memoir. Now this following quote sums up Goldberg's writing philosophy perfectly, and it reads, I don't think everyone wants to create the great American novel, but we all have a dream of telling our stories of realizing what we think, feel, and see before we die. Writing is a path to meet ourselves and become intimate. Now, before we dive into Goldberg's rules, I do want to preface this video by saying that there aren't really any rules for writing other than the ones you decide for yourself. I'm making this series, I'm making this series as a means of inspiration and education so that you can take the advice that appeals to you and leave the rest. Again, like last week, I'm going to be listing Goldberg's seven rules of writing, followed by my own commentary and interpretation of each rule. Rule number one, keep your hand moving. This is perhaps Goldberg's most famous rule. Keep your hand moving is a challenge. It's a test of your willpower and your determination. It is also the best way to separate the editor from the creator. By keeping your hand moving, you are less likely to stop, ruminate over what you have written, and to give into that false temptation of perfectionism. It is easy to waste an hour of writing time fiddling away with a paragraph or a single sentence. Now don't get me wrong, there is a time for revising, and an hour spent polishing a paragraph is an hour well spent when you are in the revising stage of your novel. However, you do not need to be wearing your editing hat if you are one, creating a first draft, two, if you're new to writing, or three, if you're just trying to make writing a habit. There is no need to have that editor hat on when you are in one of these three camps. Now, the one thing I urge you to remember here is that writing wins when you keep your hand moving. Rule number two, lose control. We self-censor our work all the time. Why? Because writing is a vulnerable act. If you are writing a memoir, this is even doubly so because you're sharing personal details and stories from your own lived experience. Now, writing fiction has its own sticky net that it's dealing with. 
Sometimes people mistakenly think that our work is memoir in fancy dress and that our characters are just mouthpieces for our own personal thoughts and beliefs. Now, I know I have had this experience with my own writing where people have thought that the horrible things my own characters think are things that I think. And of course, that's not the case. The character is the character. Now, another common fear that writers experience when sharing their work is a kind of shame around the quality of our work. And we worry that maybe our writing just isn't very good. There are so many ways that we judge our work and censor ourselves during creative practice. We cringe at the idea of our grandmother reading the sex scene in chapter seven, or that our friends will assume that's what we're into. When you are writing your first draft, or when you are writing for practice, such as doing exercises or journaling, it's super important that you loosen up. No one is going to read your work and judge it unless you let them. If you really want to develop your writing practice, then you need to let the words be ripped out of you, raw and covered in gore. Ew. If you want to write something that feels alive, then you really need to write honestly, without censorship. Rule number three, be specific. Now this rule relates to writing craft on the line level or on the sentence level. It is the details in your prose that transform words on the page into images in a reader's mind. So when you're writing, it's important that you pay attention to the nouns, verbs, colors, and textures that create your descriptions. Not every sentence has to be filled with original prose and breathtaking beauty. Some sentences are just there to move the story forward. But if you're practicing the art of keeping your hand moving, and you're noticing that one sentence seems a bit vanilla, push yourself to really be specific in the next sentence and to really come up with something creative, original, imaginative, or an unusual combination of words. Focusing on sensory details or embedding imaginative metaphors and similes are just some of the ways that you can become more specific in your descriptions. Rule number four, don't think. If you're keeping your hand moving, then there really isn't that much time to think anyway. But Goldberg makes a strong argument for following your first thought when writing. For Goldberg, this rule specifically is tied to her Zen practice. By following her first thought, she supports rules two and three because she is forcing herself to stay in the present moment. By staying present, she is better able to avoid self-censorship and to keep that editor at bay and to really let loose with her writing. Now, personally, I love this rule. The whole don't think practice is so good for me as a writer who really likes to write a scrappy, crappy, hard, fast first draft. I just need to get those ideas down on the paper in whatever way I can so that then I've got the bones of the story and I can begin the slow process of then building that skeleton up into a complete book. Rule number five, don't worry about spelling, punctuation, and grammar. As someone who is currently teaching a grammar course, this rule kind of made me cringe. But let's stick with this for a moment. The whole argument that Goldberg is making with this rule is that it's simply another way to stay present in the moment with the work. Spelling, punctuation, and grammars are duties that belong to the editor part of your brain. And your editor does not need to be in the room when you are drafting, journaling, or brainstorming. As you may have already figured out, the video has actually cut out. So the end of my original recording is gone, but I don't want to do a dodgy on you. So I'm just going to finish the video now. So where we were sort of up to was talking about not worrying about the spelling, punctuation or grammar in your work. And the reason why is because the editor operates out of the left hand side of your brain. 
She is analytical, literal, and she thinks linearly. Now, exploratory writing really needs to have the qualities of the right-hand side of the brain. She needs to be creative, imaginative, and non-linear. Now, of course, spelling, punctuation, and grammar are really important, but these are not the building blocks you need to be concerned with when you are doing a first draft or when you're simply trying to develop the habit of having a daily writing practice. Now, rule number six is you are free to write the worst junk in the world. But here's the thing, you don't have to publish it. In fact, I really hope you don't publish it. The more you write, the bigger your body of work will become. And the more you write, the better your writing will become. But of course, not everything you produce is going to be award winning. I mean, Stephen King has written over 70 books. And let's be honest, the Tommyknockers is hardly of the same caliber as The Shining, It, 1122, 63, or The Stand. I mean, you get the idea. So what's the takeaway? Write good stuff, write bad stuff, just write. Now, now we're up to Goldberg's final rule, rule number seven, go for the jugular. If something comes up in your writing that is uncomfortable, controversial, painful, wild, or surprising, then I really urge you to stick with it. Write it out until it's complete. This is a really good time to practice rule number one of keep your hand moving. Write out the thought until it's all done. As Hemingway said, write hard and clear about what hurt. Remember, you don't have to publish what you've written. You should always edit your work before you put it out there in the world. But by getting something down on the page, at least you've got something to work with. It's really important that you give yourself permission, that you allow your writing to come out messy, undulating, but alive. You may end your writing session and look back on your work and see nothing but chaos. But as long as there is a beating heart nestled within that story, then you have done your job. And it's up to your inner editor to then plug that heart into the body of your story. Well, there you have it, guys. That's Natalie Goldberg's Seven Rules of Writing. Now, if you enjoyed this video or the series as a whole, it would mean so much to me if you could hit the subscribe button or even give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like even more writing advice, you can head to my website, taraeast.com. I have over 150 blogs on the site that you can check out covering everything from creativity, inspiration, motivation, writing tips, productivity tips, as well as marketing and business advice. And of course, you can check out the other videos on this channel because you're already here. If you choose to join my weekly email newsletter, I'll send you a free cheat sheet called The Seven Ways to Stay Motivated as a Writer. And all the links are over on my website. You can also check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, Twitter. I hope you guys are staying safe, that you're staying calm, and that you're getting your writing done. Have a fabulous day, and I'll see you next week.